Hi, welcome to Give Your Wall Some Soul. I'm Shannon Grissom. Today we're doing part two of the sock monkey that we started on our last episode. And uh, the ghost sock monkey has been in the studio uh, like this. In fact, there were people that were, that were wanting me to leave it that way, but I definitely wanted to finish it on this show. On the last episode, we talked about sock monkey lips and how they're different nowadays than they were when I was a kid or my mother was a kid. And I brought, I ordered some socks so I could make a sock monkey. And I brought in a sock just to show you how they're different. Now the sock, you know, my sock monkey, you look at him, he's got this big, huge, wide grin. And the socks today, no, I'm not going to do a puppet show. <laughs> Hang on. Um, the socks today, they just, the smile, I just don't like them as well. So I'm going to be doing a, a hunt on the internet for, <laughs> for socks that have happy smiles. So the, um, I had somebody send me a sock monkey, and, he, and he's, he's really cute, but he's just not, not quite got that same little grin. And uh, so this is the difference between the sock monkeys of, of today and yesterday. All right, so where do you start when you're in the middle of the painting? Normally when we do the show, I have a blank canvas, paint furiously, and we try to get it to a certain place. What's good, gonna be good about today is that I'll be able to show you some second stages in areas that we worked on last time and uh, hopefully I'll get the, the other part of the canvas covered before we're through. So I'm going to stop talking and start painting. Oh, I have to tell you, on the way over here I realized that as many brushes as I have, and you guys see a ton of them over there, my favorite ones are I left them on the sink drying. And I think it's funny how you get used to using a certain thing. So this is going to be a good exercise for me in using materials that I'm not quite as familiar with. I'm using, going to be using all my old scruffy brushes, which is, which is what I brought with me today. This is good. It's a, it's a good exercise in forcing me to be loose. You know, the whole point of this painting is to do, a, um, you can do a serious painting of a silly subject. And so the, having brushes that aren't quite perfect are going to be a good way for me to loosen up and, and just do the job. So let's pick one good scruffy one and get going. There we go. This one's really good and splayed. I'm going to start with the duck today because I felt like he was just uh, underrepresented last time. Poor guy, we didn't even touch him. So I'm going to start mixing that color. And uh, he's got some good golds going on. So I'm going to grab some, let's see, some cab. Now, in the reference photo, he's really faded because when I found him in the attic, he'd been up there a while and his hair was dirty. And so I gave him a shampoo and that, that took the color, the pigment out of his hair. So he was a lot brighter before. So what did I do? I started with cad yellow light. I'm going to add some carbazol violet to that to get it dark. I'm going to mix my three dark, medium, and lights right away. That's a nice, nice golden brown. Why did I pick carbazol violet out of all the other colors here? Well, if you look at a color wheel, which I didn't bring with me, but if you look at a color wheel, the violet is the opposite on the color wheel. So you know when you're mixing opposite colors that that's going to work. Okay, so that's a good, I didn't mix enough paint, but that's a good dark. Cleaning my, my knife. Add a little bit more. Yeah, that's a nice rich color. I will use that in other places. And you do want to use these mixes in other places so you don't have just isolated pockets of color. This helps them to be harmonious. Oh, that's a nice rich dark. So that's a good dark. Let's find a good medium. I'm going to just take some that's still on my knife, clean that off, grab some yellow. That's a little too bright. It's a nice medium tone, but it's still too bright. So I'm going to add some white because that'll make it duller and lighter. White always makes things duller and lighter. So you're going to need to add something warm to, to brighten it back up. My paper slide in here. OK, and I'm looking at both of these right now, and I'm not liking you know, if you look at these two colors together on the palette, I had one painter friend 
when I was mixing some colors before I put them down. She said, Santa, hey, would you wear those clothes together? And uh, no, I wouldn't. That, that just hurts. Even though they are uh, supposedly sympathetic, that, that hurts. So I'm going to add a little bit of orange, brighten that up. I'm going to add a little more yellow to that. And maybe it just needs some Indian yellow or something to... Now, there are other people, there are other that might find these colors sympathetic, but I don't, I don't like them. You know what? It probably, <laughs> it probably needs a little more red. Yeah, there we go. It was just a little too violet. And I've, I've come to find that out about myself. This is a matter of personal preference, that if it's just too cold, it, it doesn't feel good to me. Yeah, that's a lot warmer. That's a lot happier. So those are two good neutrals. And I'm going to go ahead and lay in my darks. OK. Where are the darks on this little guy? OK, we're going to start with his hair. And he's got a little bit of dark right here. Not getting real technical about it. The guy's got roots. You know, he needs a little job here. So I'm going to right where it meets his face. And you know what? Even with, with uh, humans, whenever the skin, the hair meets the face, it's usually cooler in those areas. OK, so that's a nice little dark spot right by his little arm. Yeah, this duck's going to be happy to come alive here. And let's see. I moved that arm, and I moved some of that. So I'm going to have to adjust this as well, too. This is going to be dark. Can't really see much of what's going on there. I'm going to go ahead and overstate the dark, and later I'll futz around with it, but I don't want to do that right now. I'm going to overstate it down here, too, to really show up that shadow. Now, if you were doing this logically, you would paint you know, finish this one little area before going on to something else. But um, sometimes <laughs> I've got logic going on, and sometimes I just get into right brain mode, and it's like, nope, I feel like doing orange right now. So I'm going to go for his little duck foot while, while I'm there. You can see that starting to happen when I get two or three brushes going. I've got to tone this down, this little foot down, just a little bit. So I'm going to take it in some of that brown. OK, yeah, that's good. I want to put his foot in now, and the reason I'm doing that, it actually does have a little bit of logic to it, is that I'll get carried away when I start paying, painting his fur, and I don't want to lose that shape. See, if you know the things that happen when you paint, you can, you can adjust for them. I'm not saying it's great to get carried away, I just do, and I know how to compensate. Okay, that's good. And we've got, I'm going back to his little fur. He was a great duck. This makes me happy. OK, so this side of his, how's that looking? Yeah, that side is a little bit darker. He's got wild kind of hair, because I didn't brush it after I, I washed it. Oh, that looks good. Right now, it probably looks like just a little blob to you, but I can see that it's starting to take form. Grab a little more of this. This is a nice. Now, you know what? You want to give his little fuzz and his little fur some form, and it's just going to be like these pom poms. So it's got to have a dark, medium, and light area so that that happens. OK, that's a little tail there. So I'm going to have the light hit the center. Basically, I just didn't clean off my brush, and that's why I'm picking up a little bit of this darker color. It's the same mix. That's going to need to have a little bit. See, if that's too, if this area here is too light, it's not going to set up a difference between when I put his little face in. So I'm going to have to make that a little darker. So sometimes you see something on the picture, and you just need to adjust it, because you know 
what works in the, in the photograph is not necessarily going to work in the painting. Or you can make it work better because you can adjust it much more. Okay. I'm going right into the background. Let's see, where else is it? Kind of a medium tone right there. Let some of his hair just splay. Because he's got wild little hair. He was a happy duck. I wish I could remember who gave him to me. That was 40 years ago. Okay. Okay. What I'm going to do is mix a lighter yellow now. That's almost shocking yellow. Just some straight cad yellow light. And I'm going to overdo, way overdo, yeah. I'm going to overdo the light and sneak up on it. That way I don't blend it all away because I can tend to do that. Yeah, that's light. And I can tell it's going to work because I looked at the palette and it's, it's got a nice transition on the palette so it'll work once I get it on the canvas. I'm going to wipe my uh, brush off again. Okay. A little muddy. That's okay. I can do muddy on this side. I'm going to have to clean it up when I get to the other side a little bit. I'm doing a very loose brush blending here. And that's too much of a straight line. That's not going to work. Okay. I still don't think it's even bright enough for the one side, but I don't want to I don't want to judge until I get the whole thing covered, so I'm just going to keep painting. Get into trouble when I start judging too early. I had a teacher, Michael, that said you really shouldn't be judging when you're painting. Once you're, once you're in that painting mode and you're in that right-brained area, you should just be painting. And the judging is when you step away from the canvas and you take time to analyze it. Sometimes I'm better at that than others, but I think he's right. A good teacher like Michael will stay in your head forever, continue to help you to paint. Kind of a muddy, muddy color. I want to brighten that up. And the only way I'm going to be able to do that to get it to the place that I like it is to go with this Indian yellow. Now, Indi this Indian yellow is like a turbocharged yellow. Doesn't look like it's that much different, but it really is. The nice thing about Indian yellow, which I can show you later on, on the dry places, is when you glaze over the top, it really makes things pop. Okay. Need a clean brush for this. Yeah, that's better. It's still not as loud. Maybe if I go straight into it, let's see what happens. Yeah. I'm, I'm forcing myself to move on because I could futz with this dust, duck the whole hour show and I know that would be boring. Like watching paint dry. So I'm just going to keep moving and maybe I can come back and touch it up later. Okay, it's starting to get a little form in his head. And we need to, we, I need to add a little bit of uh, light over here. That's just a little too. Let's just have some, you know, throw some strokes up there so his hair just sticks up. Yeah. Because he's just, 
He's a funny little duck. Okay. can hear the little bull, bullhorn move away from the duck. Work on something else. He's getting fuzzy though. That's good. Okay, that's a good start for that. And then he's got a little light area right at the edge of his foot. Right there. That's going to need to be lighter later, but I think this is a good base start. Okay, let's get... Um, yeah, I'm tempted to move over to the sock monkey, but I'm going to try and get the, the duck done in just one fell swoop. Okay, so what I'm going to do now is go ahead and just put some of the color in on the face and just get that going. So what do we have? We've got a little tongue. And it just the bigger the stroke, and just put it down and leave it, the better off this is going to be. So right there, he's got a little red tongue there. Of course, you know I couldn't go that long into the show without putting some red in. OK, and then he's also got, I'm just going to stick some purple for the dark side of his mouth underneath. He's got that little lip thing going there. That makes it look like it's open. He's got a happy little expression. I'm using a lot of medium here, and that'll help me draw a little bit with this. Yeah, I know, the D word. OK, I need to kind of almost outline his little part of his mouth here. That's working. Now he looks more like the ghost duck, kind of like the ghost sock monkey. <laughs> so that's fun. OK, let's get his eyes in. Um, I'm actually going to go to things that are, that are different colors rather than continue with his mouth, because I can keep the same brush going. <clears throat> OK, so he's got a little highlight there, and I've got to leave that out. I'm just going to add a little blue. And it was really kind of a bluish black color. Oops. Hey, that was actually a happy accident because that was a nice little red there. And where else? His eyes are kind of going like this. It's really hard to see that other, that other eye unless you look at him in person. So I'm just going to kind of wing where it is. I'm just not sure where it is, and I'm just going to go ahead and put it there. Okay. Yep, he's looking spooky. <laughs> Definitely spooky. Finding a smaller brush. Oh no, this is this is way too scruffy. We gotta find something that's a little better than that. This is better. Okay, we've got highlights here. I'm overstating them so that I can paint over them and they'll be okay. I'm going to grab some of the mix that I made for the, the browner areas of the duck and put that in his eyes. And since my brush is dirty, it will be just the right color. Well, it wasn't just the right color. I have to lighten it up a little bit. Add a little red to it. See, I didn't add white. I added red. Yeah, that's better. And you know what? You really can't see much of the highlight in this eye. And you've got to be careful with, with the angle that you put there, or it looks kind of mean. We don't want that to happen. OK. That's not bad. OK, now this side of his face, you, you, you see that one side of his face is pretty much in shadow. So I'm going to go ahead and add the purple there, and we'll see what we can do. Now, if you've watched the show before, you know that why am I using purple? For me, it's my all-purpose shadow color. Uh, the photographer who, 
who uh, shoots my paintings, I drive him nuts because the camera doesn't, doesn't pick up purple in the shadows and that's always what I use. So he's constantly adjusting to get the color right. Okay, so this is pretty much just a dark area and it has to be darker than the hairline. And I'm just gonna put that in. This whole area is dark. I'm gonna actually blend this. You don't see that too often. I usually don't have that luxury, but that's the only way this is gonna work and not look like he's just got one big old black eye here. Okay, how far does that go? I'm drawing and, and painting at the same time, trying to figure out where I am in space. Okay, where else is it a little bit dark? His little cheek, he needs, he needs to have some form under his cheek, so that's gonna be dark. He's got a double chin, put that in. And I'm gonna overstate this little area here, again with purple. Okay, that's pretty good. Now I need to put some light in. So what I'm going to do is use some of the lighter mixtures that I've already made and use that for the light side of his body. And we'll see if we can get his face to take some form. I'm going to add a little cad red light to that because he, that's just too light, too yellow for his face, the, the mix that I have already. Let's see if that works. I'm just going to put a stroke down, see if I like that not red enough. That's a little too red. Go for the three bears thing. Okay, that's good. I think a little, a little browner, a little redder. Yeah, okay, there we go. Now I'm blending that a little bit with this shadow color so it doesn't look so isolated. Whoops. I just wiped out his whole eye. See how fast that happens? And you know what? It's not a big deal. <laughs> I will put it in later. But if I s spent the whole time worrying about that, I'd never get this painting covered. So I'm just going to keep going. Is that a rare occurrence? No. It happens all the time. OK, we need to we need have his little fat cheeks. You know I love form, so this is going to be one of the favorite parts I have is to make his little cheeks fat. In fact, uh, that same teacher, Michael, was saying I always make things a little, little fatter than they are, a um, little whiter, because I like form so much. And that's, that's good for inanimate objects, but it's not good for people, or commissions anyway. If it's not a commission, it doesn't matter. Okay, a little bit lighter on the cheeks to help this form start to pop out. I'm loving all that little color that's going on here. I have to, st I have to stop falling in love with the duck, though, because I'll spend the whole day here. Okay. Get moving. I hear it. Here I hear you guys out there. You want to see the monkey get finished. Well, the way I see it is, worst case, it's a two-parter, three-parter. It's a mini-series! <laughs> okay, what's, what's his little... He needs a little more of a smile there. I'm going to have to adjust that, too. Amazing how much color is in this little duck's face. Okay, what's right about his eyes? He's got this... Um, little blue eyeshadowy thing going on around his eyes. And you know, even though the duck has that there, this is a case where I'm not copying the reference photo because I don't want the duck to have blue eyeshadow. Well, I think this is interesting. Did you see what just happened? I didn't want the duck to have the blue eyeshadow, but I accidentally smeared it into the blue paint, so he's going to have blue eyeshadow anyway. That's just what happened. Okay, I need some light around his cheeks. Big old stroke of white. 
or light. Otherwise, he's never going to have anything three-dimensional. So I'm going to overstate the light here on his cheek. Where else is it light? It was a lot lighter right here. And right around his little bridge of his mouth, I'm going to have to fix that. But meanwhile, I'm just going to go and, and blend this and keep moving. You know what? I just uh, went right into the eye, and I'm just going to kind of blend that and pretend it didn't happen. Fix it later. Okay. Little eye there. Let's put in his upper lip. He's been a good sport, this duck. Okay. I'm doing one stroke, hopefully. Well, no, it ended up being two. And leave it. And let's see, his, his green ends right about where his little eye is, so I'm going to stop there. I'm going to overstate the light right on the bottom of his mouth. And I'll blend up to meet it. If I just filled in that little space, I'd spend the whole time just trying to be careful and not, not uh, painting out of the lines. And that's just not fun for me. You can do it. It's just not fun. Okay, I like that. Need to add a little bit of orange around his mouth. He's starting to take some form. Now, if you're, if you're passionate about the details and, and you want to spend hours just doing one little thing, that's absolutely wonderful. I am not saying that that's wrong. I'm just saying that's not how I like to paint. So if, if you're with a little tiny brush and that, that just makes your day, then go for it. <clears throat> okay. Now that's starting to make sense. I will blend his little little mouth. See, it's not quite that big. And that's a little bit lighter, his little double chin. Let's put that in. OK. I will click quickly reinstate his eyes, and then we're going to move on. How do you do that? Just grab a little purple, a little blue, and I'm not going to do much to that one because you could hardly see it anyway. Make them a little rounder than they appear in the picture. Okay. Not going to futz with the details there. Definitely need to me keep moving so that I can get what I need to get done in an hour. Now, if I was home in the studio, I'd probably play with that a lot longer. Um, but not, well, maybe not a lot longer. I'd probably spend another 10, 15 minutes on it. OK. Not even going to blend that. Very tempted to play with that. But it's time to get this monkey's face in. <clears throat> If you see the monkey in the, uh, the painting that's done behind the palette, he really doesn't have, although it looks like he has a lot of detail, he really doesn't. He's just got a series of dark mediums and lights that make those pom-poms pop, that make his little legs and the ribs pop, but he really isn't very detailed. So I'm going to just quick put it, do the same thing I did on the duck where I put in the dark, the medium, and the light, and then we will be able to have this take form. So first I need to make some mixes. He's slightly, he's not the same color as the duck, so I need to do something different. Um, and I look back at the painting and I already see something different I want to, <laughs> I want to change on the duck and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to force myself not to touch it until I get this monkey done. Okay, so let's, let's put in the darks on the monkey. I'm going to add a little more violet, a little more red, but a cooler red. Yeah. See, so I've, I've cooled down this, this dark mixture. We don't want it exactly the same as the duck. But it is very sympathetic. So that's a nice dark. OK. Well, I'm going to whip that out. I'll use a brush that I can scrub with. 
that I can paint quickly with. Don't have a lot of control with this, and that's the point. Okay, where is, we're just going to put in these little hat lines, little ridge line there. He's dark right under his chin. I'm looking at the interstitial space. I'm looking at all the dark spaces. That's also an expeditious way to paint. Okay, it's dark right here, under the pom-pom. Don't even know what's going on here, but I'm going to make it dark. Moved his pom-pom over here, so I'm going to make this, his little belly dark. Oh god, I, I missed the whole little chin. See, that's how, they, that's how these things happen. I missed the whole little chin on the duck. And I noticed that when I went to put in the dark space. So, poor guy. <laughs> okay, so it goes there. I'm looking to see where he is in relationship to his mouth. He needs to come out a little bit more. That's better. Well, I whacked off his whole little face. Okay, that's lots better. Now I can put the dark in. Is that dark enough? Yes. Darker and cooler. Want that separation. Going right into the pom poms, I'm not worried about whether I go on top of that or not. This whole thing is in shadow right here. We're just about. I may add a little bit of lighter color in the middle, but I may overstate the shadow area. Yep, that, that's working. You're, I'm getting some separation. I'm stepping back to look at that. And yes, as I step back and look, I can see that it is getting the separation. It is getting, um, you can see the diff distance between the uh, monkey and the duck. So that's good. I think with, you know, the amount of time that we do have in this program, we should be able to get a good first statement done by the end of the show. Okay, it was dark there, dark under his little hair. Where else? See, can you, if I hope you can tell that I'm just doing big blobs of color. Okay, just big. I'm not getting fussy with it. I actually just missed where there was some background. I should have put some blue in there, um, and I didn't, and I could I can fake it. When I start to paint, I notice all my little drawing errors. So um, straight blue and white is going to be too bright, so I'm going to tone it down with that. That was a little too much. And I need a little bit lighter, because otherwise nobody knows. But this is where his little... I'm putting it right over the top. So it looks like his little arm has a little space between there and his body. OK, so I wasn't getting real technical. I'm just putting little, little blobs of color in. OK. I'm not putting every thread. You know that the sock monkey's got all these little ribs. We're not putting all those in. You don't need to, to tell people what you're doing. OK, so there's his little body goes like that. What else is it done? I'm going like this. I'm going to make it. I'm tempted to put in several different colors, but right now I'm putting in one until I get this thing to a certain point. OK, I had covered over part of his leg in the last show when I was doing the background, so we'll. 
That, that uh, actually, that was the wrong angle. There's a lot of fore foreshortening here with the angle of his, his leg. And I got it kind of wrong. That's the nice thing is you can just paint over it. And then get a softer brush so that it doesn't look obvious that that's what I did. Blend that out. OK, that's better. Okay, where else is it? Little, where's the light source? Light source is almost dead on. Got shadow here. It's dark in the middle of his ear. This one ear is different than the other. That's the other thing is you'll notice one eye is higher, one eye is a little bit lower. Um, the temptation is to just even up his eyes and, and make everything symmetrical and make everything perfect. But that's not how this little guy is built. And so I'm going to paint him just slightly skewed. So this time, there are times when I, I try to get something perfect, and that's right. But this, this time, I'm, I'm letting him be a little bit off, because that's how he is. And that's how the duck is, too. OK. All right, now instead of just going crazy with the ears, I just, I, you know, and the sh there's a shadow there that doesn't really quite make sense to me, so I'm just giving him a little dark hair. He's got a little dark hair. Yeah, that, that's all you need to say. Don't need to babble. Okay, he's got a little blue ribbon. I'm going to put that in. Am I all over the place? Yeah. That's what happens once I get in the middle of the process. I start out with a plan. I'm going to do this first. I'm going to do that. Then I'm going to go there. Then I start painting. Whatever happens, happens. OK, he's got a little bow there. I like that bow. It's just a nice relief from all the red. Even the red needs a break sometimes. Got to have neutrals so that the bright colors will sing. Otherwise, everything's just loud. It's like having too many fast songs in a row when you're dancing. Makes you tired. OK. Where am I going to go next? Let's see. Going to make a slightly, now that we've got this down, slightly lighter shadow color. And we're really going to do this fast. Maybe more than slightly lighter. Add a little cad yellow. What I'm going to do is, is work it. Usually I go dark, medium, light. What I'm going to do today is I put in the darks, I put in the lights, and then I'm going to squish them all together and so we can see if we can get some fast results. If I don't get to where I want to get by the end of this show, it, it will definitely be a three-parter so you can see the whole thing entirely done. OK, so we got the lighter color. This brush is pretty stiff. I'm going to actually do it in the direction that the little threads go. And I'm just scribbling. Where is he lightest? Right in the middle. Right there. I'm going right over where his little eyelashes are. I'll put those over on top last. I'm not going to paint around those. That would make me tired. Don't want to be made tired. OK, he's got that little shadow there. This is going to be lighter later. This has to be a little different than the duck color. Where does he have light on his ears? Same thing with his tail. We've got to just start putting this color in. It's amazing how time flies when you're painting. OK, so he's got light on this part of his tail. 
I'm going to have to start cooling this down with a little bit of blue in order to make this work. Right now I'm just putting in the lights. Scrubbing it in. There. Okay. Right now it looks like I'm all over the place and I really am. You are right. Okay, so now I'm going to add a little bit of blue, make a nice gray for... His arms need to turn. What do I mean by turn? I mean they need to have form. There are people that are more into... That's the other thing. If you're more into shapes than you are into form, that's fine too. You know, none of these things are set in stone. It's what you like to paint. There are people that do wonderful things with just shapes or just color. So find what you like and really work it. Okay, is this a little too... It might be a little too mauvey. I'm just putting it up here so I can see. No, it's actually pretty good. If I use a brush that's dirty, it'll make it just light enough. Okay, so he's got some form going on here. And he's got some stuff going on here. His little ears are darker than the rest of him, so I'm going to kind of go with that hair. And what kind of shape? They're, they're way darker right here. That's a real technical term, way darker. But that's just, that's what I'm talking, that's what I'm saying to myself in my head. I'm asking, is it lighter or darker, brighter or duller? Does the shape look good? Now, when I'm home in the studio by myself, I just, I just go into the zone and, and really don't ask myself a lot of questions at all. I just paint. OK, so it has to be a little bit lighter here. That's just not going to work. And I have too dirty of a brush for that to happen. Put it down and leave it. But no, i got to blend a little. OK. And the other ear needs to be lighter. The whole ear is lighter over there. This, this painting might be a good candidate for a three-parter in that you could see all the glazing techniques. You could see how I take everything from beginning to end. And it also talks about relationships. Where a lot of the paintings that I like to do just focus on one image, one thing. This is the interplay between several different objects, colors, backgrounds, that kind of thing. So this is a good study, a seriously good study of a silly object. OK. I want him to have form. I want this to be a little lighter, but not so boring. He needs a little. A little warmer. I don't want it too close to the duck. Let's see. I don't want it too yellow. But he is yellowed with age. Not that yellow, though. Making a nicer transition here. Doing some rough blending. What is his hat doing there? I think it was supposed to be light there. That was a whoops. I just put it over the top. And I screwed up the shape, but you know what? His hat's a little cockeyed anyway. OK, I'll, I'll fix that later. Right now we're in get this thing covered mode. Want his little face to have form. Okay. His lips are. Uh, I'm gonna have to adjust those later. They definitely need a little extra light, and I think that's why it would be good to have a have this one be a three-parter. OK, 
Okay, I'm stepping back from it to see if that transition is working, and it is starting to take some form. I just need to do a little bit of blending in order for that to make sense. And there also needs to be, <laughs> in order for there to be form, there has to be some stuff going on on this side, even though it looks a little lighter, for it to turn. And that's way too dark. That's better. It's a little brighter than I want it to be, but that's okay. That'll make this whole thing turn. You can see that I'm not being careful about where I paint, really. Okay. Now I need to blend this a little bit. I really should have a paper towel on doing this so that I blend and wipe at the same time. So I'm blending and wipe. And you get a rhythm going. I'm staying out of the middle, too. You gotta pick a side. Okay, that little swell I stayed out a little bit, but that's starting to take some form. And I have to keep moving because we don't have a lot of time in the show. We'll see what I can do to fix that later. And it's not that it's broken, it's just not where I want it to be yet. Okay, so that makes it a little bit darker. Like a floating monkey right now. And the background, right where he's sitting, needs to be darker too, but I can't do that yet. I really want to get this canvas covered. Okay, this was a little darker. Yeah. <coughs> A little darker, a little redder. Let's see, where's the shadows? Right here. I'm not sure what was going on there, but I think I need to increase the dark shape. Give that separation, go straight. Oh, I know what it is. It's darker, darker part of his arm. Okay, his body needs some separation there. His little arm definitely has a joint. That's better. Is he going to look like this other monkey when I'm done? No, probably not. I did that one a few years ago, and I'm in a different place now. I really don't know where he's going to be when I'm through. I'll find out. Okay, so this needs to be darker under here. Under his little bow. I need to blend that together. We're in get this stuff done mode. So I will be blending, blending and blending. Okay, I've got a fairly clean brush. I've just created a new color or a new value, not necessarily a new color, a new value by blending. And what is going on with that there? I think this, his little, uh, his little body needs to be back there on this duck. So we'll just splay it right out. Yeah. Needs to be past that. I'm gonna... That's happier. Knew I couldn't wait till I got it done to do that. Okay. I'm adding a little more red to <laughs> to his tail, so this makes sense. Did you see by putting that up on the top, that's starting to create, uh, have some form? Go right off the canvas. This is kind of an awkward little angle. I'll have to deal with that later. Okay, so now I'm going to see what I can do about blending this. 
so that more of it has some form. It's going to have to have, yeah, it definitely has to have a little dark on the edge here. A little bit cooler, it's reflected light. Reflected light is always cooler than the highlights. Okay. I was just too gentle with that. I need to give him a serious dark, dark side of his arm here. So I'm putting that in. I'm not doing a straight line because that would be boring. It needs to be broken up. And there really aren't any straight lines here. I'm blending this. I really should clean my, my brush off. Okay. I'm blending this side, then I'm going to go back to this side and blend over here. And let's see what's going on. This is flat. Can't have flat. Blending right into the background. Going with the form. Okay, now I can start cleaning things up. Yeah. I'm taking a completely clean brush. And if I wipe like I said I was supposed to, <laughs> when I blend, it'll work. If I forget, it won't. That's good. There's only a few strokes and I gotta blend. Get a little shoulder going here. It is actually pretty dark in the picture. Yep, that's nice. Okay, I need to blend this too. Some of that blue that's there is nice in the background. This whole thing is cooler, so I will deal with that later. Let's see what I can do to make this thing pop a little better. That's darker there. This little side of him is darker, so I'm just blending that in. But I need a little more paint in order to do that. Okay, so it's dark right under here. I'm basically reinstating what I did before. Because when the paint's wet like this, you just blend it away. Or you can. Okay, so that's dark over there. This whole little side of this, but I think it needs to be a little warmer to give it that separation. There. And he's starting to get form. I guess what I'm doing is I'm creating yet another layer. The poor guy's got to have eyelashes before we leave tonight. Got to put his little eyes in. Even though the next time we go into it, I will paint over them, at least they will be a little place marker. And I will blend his little lips. Yep, that's working. Okay, so I'm getting back from it and I'm looking to just see if it's starting to take form. It is, but it definitely, in order to get it to a finished state, I'd really, really um, gonna like to bring it back next time. And that way you can see all the glazing techniques, all the scumbling, and what I do, you know, you usually see the painting in one place and then the next week I bring it in and it's done. So this is gonna give you a really good chance to see the entire process. Okay, so let's give him eyelashes so he's not stuck without those for till the next time. Uh, let's see. And we're gonna probably glaze and paint over these last, you know, next time anyway. 
Let's see, he's got one here, he's got one there. Reinstate his little eyes. What's going on there? He's got these little button eyes. And put his eyelashes in here. And you can see the way this was sewed. Some of the eyelashes are a little too close together. I may delete one because I don't like that shape. You can tell we're in the computer age and I talk about deleting things. Okay, so that was easy. And do we even need all of those? I don't know. I'm gonna take I'm gonna take another one out and we'll decide next time. Okay, so we have eyelashes in. Then what we need to do is put in some more darks, reinstate those. Right over this. This is going to make this pop out a little bit. Right over the top of that. And you know what? We could even go over this part of the pom-pom, make that side darker. See, that little blue we put in did make a difference. It does look like the background's there. That's good. That worked. Okay, what else can we do to bring it to have some more form? We can, you know, work his face a little bit. We can fix his tail. Yep, that's looking good. And we'll add a little more separation here, a little more separation with the ears. That's got to push that back. It's a push and pull. There's a little happy smile in. Okay. All right, so he's got a really, a really good start. Um, he's starting to get some form. He needs to have all his lights and darks reinstated. But, you know, in, a, in an hour show, there was just no way we were going to get this done. But I think the lesson here is to just keep moving, don't worry about the details, just keep painting and um, get the canvas covered. And then the next time you go into it, you let it dry, you can glaze over it, you can scumble. And so it, I think the next show is going to be really exciting because you'll be able to learn all these techniques in one show. Let's see if we can just throw something in just to make it a little more exciting, warm this up, not with a dirty brush. Basically, we have just a few minutes left in this episode. I want to thank you so much for watching this show. This is our 20th show and couldn't do it without my awesome crew. And so I wanted to thank you for coming, thank the crew for being here, and I hope to see you next time on Give Your Wall Some Soul.